So boujou everyone. Um, uh, boujou in Denawe Magana dog. Ivy Nin and Dijna Kashagi Nashimong, Awanukwe, Ojibwe Mong, Gichi Onegamine and Dunjaba, uh, American Indian Community Housing Organization and Da. Uh, so hello everyone. My name is Ivy Vinyo. I go by she, her pronouns. And I work at the American Indian Community Housing Organization. I'm their cultural arts coordinator, among other things. And so um, I just want to welcome you all to tonight's uh, Birch Bark Rattle making session uh, with Laban Smith, who is a Walpole uh, Island First Nations uh, citizen and artist. And so excited to have Laban with us today. Um, before I turn it over to Laban, uh, I want to just kind of uh, go over the rules of engagement, thank our funders. I'll thank the funders now um, because without them, this would not be happening. And so I want to give a big chimi witch, big thanks to the Minnesota Department of Human Services uh, Behavioral Health Division and also the McKnight Foundation. Um, our rules of engagement for this session is if we could keep you all muted, so stay muted if you can, or if you will. Um, and then uh, you can keep your screen on if you, if you like. We wanna kind of see your progress for those that are uh, following along with Laban with making the rattle. And so, Feel free to leave your, your, your screen on. Um, if you have any questions along the way, put those in the chat and I will be moderating that chat. And uh, maybe later towards the end, we will open it up to where people can unmute and um, ask uh, Laban some questions or maybe give some um, experience of your own experiences with uh, rattles and and things like that. Uh, let's see, Becky Nelson is our wonderful Zoom assistant. So if you have any issue, like tech technical issues with the Zoom tonight, uh, send her a direct chat message and she can help you. And uh, miigwech to Becky for helping us out tonight. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I. One last thing before I turn it over to Laban is that um, I will be sending out a, a survey, a participant survey via email to all the registrants, as well as a recorded link. And so if you um, could fill out that survey, please do that because we wanna get, get some feedback and um, I wanna provide Laban with some feedback on, on the session as well. So please, um, please uh, fill that out. All right. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Laban because we only have an hour and a half. All right. All right. Laban Miigwech for being with us today and teaching us. Thank you for the introduction. And I'll be um, your guide for this process of making a wigwash shishigwim, um, birch bark shaker. So as you know, but there's many different types of birch bark thicknesses, um, but this is um, winter bark, so we can etch on it. And the stuff you get in the summer, you can't etch on it because this layer um, stays to the tree. But this is a fairly thin, thin layer. Um, but these aren't always as tight as this one looks because sometimes they'll start to delaminate, which will be good for this process, but it'll be good for other processes. Um, but I'll show you some something that you may or may not know. So I'll show you this. I don't know if anybody can see that what they call this is the Thunderbirds right here. Oh, we can't see Laban. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yep. So this here, they call that the Thunderbirds. And there's like a, a story that goes along with it too. That's why like these marks here, they call those thunderbirds. They're on the back side of it as well. See like this here. 
yeah, like this, something like that. But this is a nice thick board compared to that one. It's like three times as thick. So the shaker is um, it's from a day one story, and it comes like for the first sound, like you know, that's how that, that was supposed to be. That was the first sound. So, I mean, there's many different types of shakers. There's like gourd shakers or the par flesh shakers. They're made all differently, but they're not um, indifferent. They're just different forms of shakers. So, um, we got our caps here. I got our Spark. Um, and can you see? Oops. Uh, we do have this is spruce root too, like for you that has some of the spruce root. We dug it and it's split in half. It's been peeled and split. Laban, where do you get the spruce root? It's like six inches under the earth. You just dig for it with a pickaxe. And you can get it all year except when the ground is frozen. It's hard. So we can get right into doing this. And I'll show you how you can just measure this two to nine inches, but I'll show you what you can do. Let's do this. So you get a mark. So you put a mark on your cap. Then you'll roll it. Then you'll know that's your different your your distance you're going across. And we'll roll it, and that's where my mark is. Laban, how big is the cap? The cap is nine. I believe it's nine inches. But so that's how far my line went to. So we're gonna put that line and we're gonna match it up on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. There's a lines right there on that spark. Yeah, I'll move it. So I'll slide that in there like that. That's about our spacing for these caps because they gotta fit in here real nice and snug. So we're gonna have to do some sanding. But I'm gonna put a clamp on this to hold it. And Laban, can you um, also share about what other alternatives you can use for stitching the, the rattle? Oh yeah, you could use leather. Work fine. Sinew, it's kind of, it feels weird to, cause I don't think it really gets as tight as you can. Like with, like with root or with leather. So since we have this rolled up, let me see how I have it clamped. Now you'll have that overlap that's going, that's your overlapping just a little bit. And this is where we're gonna sew with the root. So I'm going to put some marks on here. And what you got to remember too is that you're not sewing all the way to the top because you have this cap difference up here. So you have that thickness down the top and the bottom. So you're going in between all that. So you got to kind of look where that's going. So I'll put a mark here. Switch it. Let's add it here. So I'll go here. And the middle mark. Laban, another quick question is, um, do you use the um, the spruce root when you fresh, when you dig it out, or do you let it dry? Okay, that's a great question. So I had this root soaking, 
and I should still keep it wet. So when you're using it, see now it's flexible, but it'll be dry and brittle and it'll break. So you gotta keep these wet. So this has been soaking for about an hour, maybe a couple hours. So it's pliable, so it's not gonna break when I stitch. So there's a flat side that's been, and that's what we're gonna do. So when we're gonna do this, usually you just half it when I start putting the holes in there. And, th and this stitch is um, what we use on the canoe as well. It's a running stitch, but I'll, I'll get right in, right in here. And, oh, let me see. People can see me, my all. So I kind of push through both layers. So with this, I'm gonna do half and half. But you know, how you start, you get half and half. And what I wanna do is run both of these to the same spot, the next one here. Okay, can we, um, can we take a pause and kind of see how people are doing? How's everybody doing? What, are we, are we? at the mark where he is putting the holes in the? I just put one in. Usually go one at a time. You don't want it to go offline too much. Okay, someone's saying that you're going too fast. <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah, so maybe just <clears throat> slow it up just a little bit. Um, and then somebody asked, what did you mean by winter bark? Winter bark is etchable. Like you can get it on like cool fall days, like in October. It's a good time to get it. Cause that's when the bark will peel off with this layer. Cause when you etch it, that's how you etch the um, wee wash. Okay. Um, and so we have a technical question here, um, okay. Becky and Laban. So, some people are wanting you to spotlight one, like how, I think, how, with, with your hands, I think, hmm. uh, um, and just having that. The one that's from straight on? Yeah, the straight on one, I think. Um, can you see from the, from the chat, Becky? Yeah, I see what folks are saying. I will, I will share with everybody. Both videos for Laban are in spotlight right now. And so in the recording, they should be side by side. Um, I'm not sure why that's not working properly for folks. It wasn't working for Ivy either. But I will um, remove spotlight from the overhead camera for now, if that's, a, or if, if that's what you would like. Um, Is that OK, Laban? Yeah, that's fine. OK. And does that let me know in the chat if that works for folks um, and we can adjust. Okay. The other option is that folks can hover over his video and click on the three dots in blue and pin the videos that they want to see. Okay, and if you have issue or need um, clarification, just uh, reach out to Becky through the chat. Becky Nelson. Oh, see, some people are saying put please please put both back, both views up. They like both. Would I put both up, and then anybody who's still having an issue, send me a chat, and I will work with you directly to see if we can figure it out. Okay, so we have. It says it won't let them pin, but both views are good. So let's keep it to both views. And then the people that want to just to have the one straight on view, um, send Becky Nelson a chat. OK, so Becky, we have both views still, right? Yes. OK, all right. So hopefully during that whole thing, people were able to catch up. <laughs> All right, Laban, it's your turn. Okay. 
So what I'm ready to do is make my second hallmark. Let's see where we are. Uh, someone is asking how big is, what size is the birch bark piece? This way or the rolled out way? I believe it was four by 10, maybe three and a half. Is that what they were looking for? Yes. Okay. So how this stitch works is that this one from the inside will go through this hole and this one will go through the same hole as well. So you're kind of, you know, going around and come back through, like making that kind of a sewing pattern, but it'll lay down nice and smooth. So the best way to do this as long as you have this one laid down through there first, then it won't go offline. But you can come from the bottom and put that in there and then either way, but there's no really wrong way of doing it. I'll keep my root that way. Just a bit of water on it. So you're going in through the bottom again and up? Yeah, so I'm going through the inside. I'm coming out through those, those. yeah, oops. Okay, but I'm not going up, yeah. There you go. Uh, so now this one, see how this one's gonna be the lead one now? This one goes behind it. Can you bring it over to the, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, sorry. So this one's gonna be going behind this inside that same hole now. This was the inside one. And we're trying to leave the round, the round part exposed to the outside. So now, is how it looks on the inside too, just to show you guys. This is before I tighten them. Okay. Are the holes about a half inch apart? Uh, I just eyeballed them and made, see the marks where I put them? Yeah. No, I don't know what size they are. I just eyeballed them. I did the ends first and I put a middle and then I did the, Splitter, you know, I just divided them. So can you go over what you just did with the with the spruce root? Because I'm a little confused on that myself. Okay. So what I did with the root at first, I put it in halfway. I halved it and now I sewed from the inside can out. Can you bring it? Yeah. I sewed from the inside out with this one, and then I put this one here like that and then I put the other half through here so now I'll show you so it be really clear now see I'm gonna tighten this there. now I'll tighten the other side inside so that's your first stitch And then we just continue till here and then we tie it off. Okay. You got a very good in a comment there. Okay. But this stitch here is what we use on the canoe as well because it goes across these eyes. You see the eyes on here that go this way. And what this does, it helps it from splitting like across those eyes because it'll split on those eyes. So this is a 
a stitch that goes all the way across the canoe. Root dampened. Brittle because it'll crack on you. I'll have to start where that's. If you cracked here, and you'd have to sew that all up. But that's a whole other ball of wax there. So Laban, a question is: is the is the bark wet? Do you keep the bark wet too? No, just the root. Okay. At this point. Yeah, because this is lucky enough. I didn't need the um, heat. I got a heat gun if it wasn't gonna circle up for me, but since it's a fairly thin piece, and but it's not too thin, I could just manually fold it. Because other pieces of bark, like this big chunk I have showed earlier, you need a heat gun or like any heat source, hot water will do the trick too. But then it'll soften up and bend for like when you're doing baskets, folding those corners and getting those edges where it don't crack. So I'm just keeping this uh, spruce root wet. Okay. Oops, sorry. Sometimes you gotta all oh, those holes a couple times. So when I do that, I don't pull the root all the way through, just so you have wiggle room for both roots. So now this one lays forward, and then this one goes up here. Okay. Pull it snug, but don't make it too tight because sometimes you'll pull it and it'll snap. So that's why we like to keep it damp so it's not brittle. Yeah, see how those kind of go in line? If you did it the other way, it would go off a little bit and wouldn't look as smooth. It looks good. Um, we got another question here. Okay. Uh, is the spruce root flat? on the inside as well? On the inside? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just when you start, you have to spin this top one around, like I just did. And then after that, it'll stay like consistent. Okay. It's just after this, because you're doing the 50-50 and yes, they will be both flat on that first stitch, but you have to spin it on this stitch what I had to just do. Okay. So this secondary stitch, I have to split that root to make it rounded side up because it goes through here on the flat side up. So I have to split, make, flip it around. Okay. Yeah, I'll try and show you on the inside if uh, I can get a good angle. But see how those are off center? Yeah. Okay. And, that, and that's how you know you did it wrong if you set it up backwards on, on the outside. Okay. But yeah, it'll look like that just because we're trying to get a smooth surface here to look clean. All right, taking the clamp off. Yeah, so like when you're done 
going through this process of making yourself a, a CC one, you um you can put that in your bundle or carry it around to the ceremonies you go to and join in when people sing and drum like at the moon ceremonies or whatever ceremonies that you go to that you can take a shake or two. We have a question about that, Laban. Okay. Uh, traditionally, can anybody make these or are you told or are you told to make one or do you have to have a dream about it? I don't know about having a dream, but I believe everybody has their own understanding of how one comes in to acquiring one. But I mean, to have a dream about a shaker, I don't know. I'm sure you could have a dream about a shaker and you can make one. Okay. And then um, what about non-native people? Making them. Uh, I mean, people do make them. They're not native, but not really. I think it's just how people feel about who's making it, I guess. I mean, that's kind of a, that's a tricky question. Yeah, yeah. I got an easier one for you. When is the best time to pick the spruce root, in your opinion? <laughs> Anytime the ground's not frozen. I mean, you can go it after the rain, the ground will be all soft, but it's still always gonna be difficult to uh, untangle it. And if you um, pick pick a lot of it, like like I do, like for stuff, um, then you'll have to boil it. But usually, if you're only getting like you know a couple feet of it, you can almost peel it right there. And then instead of boiling the root, because a lot of the stuff you just harvest a lot of it and then later boil it for a few hours, and then that skin will come off. So the root. Generally, I'll try and see if I can put this together. So if they're, you know, solid like that, and I would just split them. Now you get, now you got double the root. But yeah, they're split. How, how big are the roots when you dig down and and get them? Are they that thin, or do you have to split them? Or oh yeah, you definitely have to split these. Like these are fairly thin, but like for canoe stuff, usually size of your pinky great or pencil okay that you know okay. but normally you get a lot like thick chunks and there's ways to split all that stuff down make some nice little ribbons okay um and then we have a clarification on um what you're doing so is laban doing one up and one down through the same hole yes yes Okay. So, so this one is going to be my last one, so I don't send the inside one through because I'm going to tie it off. That's why I'm just sitting here for a second. So once I send this one through, I'll just tie them both up in here or sew them back through the old stitchings, you know, like put them through, like say this is the inside, I could put these through you know, slip it under there and it'll go through. And it'll, once it dries, it'll remain solid. But you can just do an overhand knot. And I'll show you that right now. So this is the final stitch. So you see how that's all the way through. And that's why there's spaces here is for these caps to go inside of them so you're not hitting the root Oops, sorry there so i'm just going to do an overhand knot as you can see that they're both on the inside here so 
So this is the knot I'm doing. Just the overhand knot, like tying your shoes. Six. So like I said, if you want to, you can either tie these again or you can loop them back through on the inside. And everyone, we, we are recording this session and I will be sending out this video to all of the registrants. And so um, you'll be able to refer back to this if, if you're getting behind and you're not able to, you know, uh, keep up, you can, you can follow along at your own pace with the recording. So I looped that one underneath the other lace, which this one's still free, that's been tied. And Laban's, uh, he's, he's used to doing these in person. So doing it over Zoom is, you know, a little tricky for us. So, and I'm sure very tricky for him. And so um, thank you for understanding um, all, of, all of that. I think as long as everybody's getting the concept of how these are stitched through and you just tie one end and you can weave them back through a little bit. Okay, well, so once that dries, it's going to be really solid. You don't have to worry about it falling apart. So what I'm going to do now is just clip that excess off. Just try not to cut your stitches on the inside. So this is what it looks like now that it's been trimmed. I just overhand tied it and then slipped it underneath the other roots that were tied to the bark. Nothing too fancy. How's everybody doing? Oh, nice. Well, that's that. As you can see, it's a little uneven. We can sand that off after. But that's normal. Normal fun time things. So now we can move on to the caps. <clears throat> what I suggest with doing caps, keep it to one side. Like if you're doing the side that you started at sewing and then compared to the one you ended, which would probably be, doesn't matter which side you do it, just keep the cap to that side. Cause it's just easier to work the one. Cause then you're like, oh, I figured it out for over here and it could be a little different size. You know, so just keep it to one side. Kathy from the West Coast says that you're doing amazing. Oh, awesome, thanks. They're very grateful. You're getting a lot of miigwetches. So at this point, we could be ready to start doing these caps. 
and like how mine are. Like I cut these out and you see that little pencil line on there. These are pretty close, so I'm just gonna sand that and then see how that goes. And the diameter of the disc again, is that like three inches or? Mm, no, that's nine, like nine around. Oh, nine around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because once you figure out one part, then you have to figure out the other one because you need at least a little bit more just for this sewing line, for that overlap. So I believe this is about 10 legs or nine. And then you'll have the difference here. And that's why you got to sand them because this is going to be in the way. So you sand them until it fits. And what about the thickness of the, of the, of the cap? eight maybe it's not that does it thick. matter what the thickness is well you don't want to use a two by four on it <laughs> yeah i mean it could be you know like if it's double like that which is i think a half inch I mean, which is you know you're just looking at more of where your sewing lines are after that of the thickness so. right so all that kind of comes into play too So I'll just sand these down a little bit and try and make them circle-ish. So Becky Nelson put in the in the chat that um, the diameter would be around two point five inches. Okay. Just getting all fancy on me over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then somebody said, if we wanted to wood burn the caps, would that be done prior to attaching them to the birch bark? No, that's actually a finishing thing. You could bead the handle too after. You could put anything. I'm just showing you the basic idea to it you know it's kind of like like how we're using these copper bbs to fill this i mean you can go out and find copper at like i think the crystal stores have little copper chunks um also too you can um if you're so willing and daring to um go into the, the bush to go find some um bear um at, then um, you could dry that out since the bear had already processed it and you could put that in here too and that adds another layer to it okay thank you for that um, what tools did you use to cut the discs and what kind of wood is the cap the cap is cedar and I used a bandsaw to cut it out to okay. rough it out thank you mm -hmm. So now that I sanded these down a bit, what I want to do, look at the best side, what I'm going to use for the outside. So this is going to be the inside. So what I want to do with that inside is either I could take a knife and start cutting that down, but I'm on an edge on here, like an angled. All right, let's see. So I want to take an angle to it, you know. So what that's going to do is once we take this edge off, it's going to be angled little bit it'll help it slide into here a little bit better and, and fit snugger okay 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 maybe i should cut it because it might be quicker that way so we have a question about what cedar board or piece did you start with what's that um what cedar board or piece did you start with i don't know what that means oh it's just like stuff we had from build and just 
had planed it and then smoothed it out and then just cut it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're so, just clarifying. What did you cut the disc from? Oh, it could have been like from a canoe rib or something like that broke and just recycled it into lids. Okay. And people are liking the beveled edge idea. Yeah. Juanicia. So to help have this beveled edge, I don't know if you can see a little bit. We got to get it a lot steeper than that. And usually I like to have like a power tool that'll be like just so quick. You know, it'll just shave that whole edge off instead of like hand sanding it. But that's why I got the knife out too to kind of help get that going. So you would just use a, a knife to, to bevel that edge? Or well, I, would use, I would use a sander because usually we just have a big belt sander and an angle grinder with a sanding disc on it. And that works really quick. But I mean, you can do it this way too. Since we're going on the idea that everybody don't have like a sander or something like that. Yeah, somebody said a RASP, R-A-S-P, oh, yeah. would work Yeah, that'll, well. that'll work great too, yeah. Is the, is the wood 3 eighths inch to a quarter inch or a quarter inch? I think people are getting hung up on the, the, the width of that cap. Oh yeah, I can actually get the, um, yeah, hold on. Yeah, you know, it's like a quarter inch. A quarter inch, okay. Yeah, roughly a quarter inch. Yeah. And, and then another question is, what would those of us without canoe ribs lying around <laughs> use for, for the disc? Well, you can go to the hardware store and find like cedar boards. Okay. Sometimes they'll be too thick, so you might have to like run down the middle of the board, cut it thinner. Um, I guess we're gonna work with a, you know, for a fairly thick cap. You can do that. Okay. I have a question just personally. Um, um, so spiritually or culturally, um, when you bring, when you use a rattle in a ceremony, is that to call the spirits in to, to, to answer your, your, your prayers or what, it, what is the, the action of the rattle? What does that do? Yeah, I believe that's what it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's the whole idea of like all of that, because it's, it's like the first sound, you know. Mm. Because it's kind of like the jingle dress where they, I've heard that spirits like to hear, you know, the 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 sound of the jingles. Yeah. And that's the when they spirits. come to 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 do the healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll stop asking questions now. Oh, it's okay. No. I mean, my, my questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, would wood slices work like wood cookies? Wood cookies. <laughs> I don't know what those are either. I know. I'm trying to, I know wood biscuits, but those are like little little wee pieces. Oh yeah, biscuits. Yeah. Like shims. Yeah. Yeah, or like little connector pieces. And 
And then Elaine Sullivan, my husband's cousin, says th three foot, three foot wood three disc, foot. three foot wood disc blanks for crafts are available almost anywhere. Mm. Three inch, maybe. Oh yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah, three inch. It's just since we um, have all that excess of cedar, and then we don't want to like so it was already given tobacco for, so we try and use as much of it as possible. So there's a small bevel on there soon. Pretty rough, but. What we got. Okay, so that's not fitting as smoothly as I want, but we're almost there. But that's why that bevel helps so you can get a really super snug fit. Because uh, we're not using glue on this, we're going to tack this in with um, toothpicks. So it'll be sturdy. So we're almost there. Just got a little bit more sanding right there. And that's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna try and fit this back to the same spot because it's fitting well. And I just know how much I gotta take off here. So it's on the back. Like, so if I'm gonna put it this way, it's on right here. Okay, we got a couple questions. Um, can you use maple wood? Oh yeah. Okay, and then the other question is, do the caps, copper pellets, and overall rattle size determine the sound? Oh, definitely. Everything determines the sound. I mean, you can go along and experiment on thicker birch bark and different types of things and thinner and all this and that, but they're all unique sounding instruments because they're individuals. No two are the same. Okay, you got a miigwech on that. A Wendy Wayne Jibaya Jan Laban. I just butchered Ojibwe there. A Nindi Wayne Jibiyan Laban. Okay, so what I did too, I put a pencil mark where this line is. So I know that that's going back there again. And I'm just going to sand off this side a little bit. That was hanging over. That's really good. Now I'm just gonna push it from this side. There. That's the inside. See how tight that is against the wall? I'm not tacking this in right now though. We're gonna wait. And that's why I say you do it on one side. Now you can work on the other side. So now I know that fits. I'm taking it up, I'm working on the other side. Because if I left that in there, I wouldn't be able to get this out if I put it in all wonky. 
Okay. Okay. So now I'm working on this side. Same thing, sand it down a bit so you get to the lines a little bit and just sand it down. And then we'll work on the bevel after we get it pretty close. You don't want to take off too much because if you do that, then you'll have like holes in it. You really don't want holes. Is there any hope if you file your cap too much and it, it, it is smaller than the opening? I predict that I will likely do that. Mm, that happens. Just go slow. Like That's why I always check. Like, you can always look at it and say, okay. Okay. And then that's when you start making your bevels. You always got to keep an eye on both. You can definitely, I've done this, um, especially with power tools, it's a lot easier to go overboard sanding. So you just do a little bit at a time and you always keep checking. So, I mean, you wouldn't learn anything if you didn't make no mistakes. I mean, I made plenty of mistakes and all that. You gotta go slow on these. And for the people that are doing this first time, give them a shot. I'm glad you're willing to learn something, something different. Can we get a sense from the people who are making a rattle following along? Can you put in the chat if you are? Um, just to, so we can get a sense of how many people are following along. Miigwech. And on that same note, um, we if you're on social media and you post a photo of your rattle, um, tag ACO galleries in, in that so we can see. Um, and or if you feel comfortable, you could email me a picture of your rattle and I could post it in an album. I wouldn't put your name on it. Um, just, uh, yeah, so people can can see. Miigwech. Yeah, so like what you're talking about when you think you're gonna go do too much, that's why I like to put a beveled edge on it too, because it helps you figure out much or where you are. You know, it kind of lines you up to get you a better fit. Because sometimes you can put too much of a bevel on it too. So that's why I'm putting a bevel on it now so I can check and see how much more sanding where. Katie must have come on later. So what do you tie, what do you use to tie the birch bark with? And that was spruce root, but you can also use alternative things. Yeah, like, like leather. leather. Yeah, just because it has a better fit and hold. Like if you use sinew, it's always going to be like, you won't feel it getting like a nice snug fit. Have you ever used leather yourself for the lacing? I have, yes. <laughs> it's 
it's um, a little bit harder to work with than spruce root because fruitless has that stiffness that will get through them holes better. This is like, you know, but there's ways of doing it. Like if you tied like a little piece of metal to it and try and squeeze it through there, it kind of kind of works, but it's a little bit harder. But you can still do it and it'll have a nice, it'll have a nice better hold. And someone just suggested to me that maybe um, following up in like a month or so or two to about the finished rattles. Mm, yeah. I just think everybody's going to be done in like a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but I realize that it takes time. So I forgot about that. Yeah. Like you can get it done quicker. Like if you have power tools and all that stuff and you know what you're doing you go through the steps yourself like the more you do it, it just it's, you know what to look for you know what to expect and what you have to do you know just like uh, riding a bike Laban how did you learn how to make uh, these rattles who taught you self taught was out of a I was doing canister class and um and this is why I say you're you're making my version of a, a canister because before when I was doing it I was like this bark you wouldn't use glue or anything you would cut stuff in there like arrows or something arrowheads and they would stick together and you'd have to Put that bark like that and it would make a pattern like that but we sewed it it's just hard <clears throat> like if you know when showing new students how to do that because uh, i had to use paper before and we did that pattern and then you use that pattern you put it on your bark plus it's way more bark because you have to go over that overlap on the inside so you'd have to go almost around twice so double the bark double the work so out of that process and that thought is like, oh, you just make these a little smaller. You know, then you got your tea box. So you leave it at this stage and put leather through one side. You know, if this bottom is pinned, you can have this top one. This leather, you got your handle, and you can put stuff in there. But that's this stage of the project. Next, after we get this done and fitted. We'll do the handle before we cap it all together. So that's just how I did it. So who taught you though? Like did did somebody in your family teach you or elder in the community or oh no, that's no, I, I just learned it on my own. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But my grandma though, like we did leather work with her, like little pouches and stuff like that. But um even Birch, not birch bark, um, ash baskets. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Haven't made one of those in a while. But yeah, so I gotta just finish this. So, <clears throat> is there people following along right now, like doing this? Uh, yes, there is about, I think, five, five or six that put in the chat that they were, they were following along. Okay, how are they doing, like, in their process? Like, where are they? Are they still sewing? Are they onto the caps or what? Oh, uh, someone is uh, showing their, um, they got, they got it sewed and they're showing their caps. Oh, okay. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just working on the caps and making them fit. So, yeah, yeah you're, that's good. Awesome.
it does take a little bit longer to hand sand these caps. But like I said, I like using an angle grinder where it's like zip zap and it's done. And I got a little bit more to go here. Oh, someone's birch bark was too thin. I need to harvest some thicker. Working on the caps, we'll do it tomorrow and take notes tonight. Hmm. Why is it too thin? Is it splitting or is it just too thin? Are you looking at, you're trying to get like nickel thick bark? Oh, I think that's to you, Cassandra. You can go as low as almost a dime thickness, like a little thicker than that. Like when you're going to like nickel thickness, you're getting into baskets and canoe stuff, you know? So Kimberly Kishik, she says that she's just watching. I have the bark I, and the roots, no caps or handle. I'll try mm. this over the weekend. I make quill boxes. So this caught my presentation, caught my attention, Chimigwich. Okay. So that might be a good point to say like what people can use for the handle. I mean, you're not to the handle part yet, so maybe you're going to- No, I mean, I just got it. like this. It's, it's fairly thick and I got to trim all this off for, to get it through these. But what, what would you use for that? Or what well, could you could use? Well, use? Red, you could use red willow, maple, driftwood, or how fancy you want to make make it you can cut out or carve a cool little handle out of anything okay i have a, I have a friend but in wallsburg he makes really fine shaker handles they're, they're almost like the top end of the shakers they're really nice carves them out and puts cool little details into them like little antler caps and stuff and little he goes all out on his stuff, which is awesome. But I'm here just showing you how to make these. You know, it's basic. I mean, after you get the understanding of how this is created, you can go all, all wild out on it as much as you want. You can go fancy with the caps. Like I'm making the caps fit flush. You can even have a little cap sticking up just a little bit on both sides, and then you could carve that or would burn it you know like you can make it as fancy as you want after i'm just showing you these steps because once you understand it, you're like oh yeah i could do a what could i do to make it a little bit more fancy right you can even use a um, antler for the handle or i mean then you can go ahead and experiment with um even bull those old bull horns mm -hmm. So Teresa's asking exactly how tight does the cat need to be? And Wayne Doopy from Fond du Lac, whoop whoop, uh, says Miigwech Laban from Walpole Island. Okay, so when I like to do them, I like to keep them real snug where there's not a heck of a lot of light going through. Kind of like how I make my tea boxes. So once I put this cap on, it's, I'll just show you again how snug this is. The only space that I have is gonna be at where that layer of bark is, right where it overlaps. That's the only space that I got on here. It's all tight through here.
Okay. That's where the sanding comes in. And I did put it back where I said to. There's that line on my right here. That's how I know it goes there. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay. So now I'm just working on the opposite side of that to get it to fit too. Anna Martin O'Merritt says you're a really good teacher. Oh, thank you. Nemigwitshawendam. I am grateful, she says. I'm glad everybody's here to be showing in and give it a shot. Me too. It's, it's, like I said before, it's a little tricky doing it on Zoom when it's yeah. better in person, but um, more access to people all over to, if we do it this way. And oh, plus yeah. it's safer from COVID. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, let's see. Oh, somebody says they're going to teach their grandchildren. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. And Linda says she can't wait to gather her materials to try this type of rattle. You're inspiring people, Laban. Awesome. Oh, and then some, Jill asked, "Do you did you have to heat the birch bark to cut it, or what did you cut it with?" Oh, I used um, a razor knife. Somebody just joined in from or joined in from Moose Factory. I don't know where that is. It's in Canada. Ah. Up by Sudbury. Uh, Listen, the time here. Would you condone the, the use of an exacto knife to bevel, or is that too risky? You can. I would say be really careful with that, because I know even in other classes, tool making, a guy really cut his finger really bad. So really be careful with any sharp tools. I mean, we had axes, and people just put their hands on them, and they get Sharp. They're sharp and people get cut by those too. So, yeah, be really careful. And that's why I usually, and generally, if I'm doing a class, I would just use sanders, like belt sanders. It's a lot quicker, a little bit safer than knives. Okay. Safety is key. So, um, just wanted to throw this out there that um, Becky, our Zoom tech, person is going to, at, towards the end, um, allow people to unmute. And mm -hmm. um, they can, if you're work, we want to see your progress, even if you're not finished. Um, I'm sure Laban is really interested in seeing, seeing how you're doing. So we're mm -hmm. going to do that um, closer to the end. And we might just go a little bit over 
time. Um, yeah. So hopefully you're all okay with that. Okay. Yeah. So now what I can do, and what I'm going to do is I have to make an opening here and here, and which is going to determine my size of this and how thin it's going. So if this hole is a little bit bigger, I can go through further. And this one don't have to be that huge. So we're moving on to the handle part. And normally I usually, you can use a drill, but the awl will do the same thing. Can the birch bark on the west coast be used? Do you know? Is it paper birch? Should be used, yeah. If it's paper birch, it can be used. Well, that's a small hole. So I gotta make that a little bit bigger. But I gotta make this one the same way. Trying not to split the cap. Because that can happen. And what are what are, you're just using the um what is that you're using to do that? The all. Oh, the all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is the all. Fancy one. And it's a square tip. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we have another, um, uh, maybe we'll just, we'll wait for that one. It's, we have a, a, a spiritual question. Oh yeah? You, you want me to ask you? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, are you able to share why they call it a Thunderbird? Yeah. You mean the marks on the tree? Like on the bark, I mean? Is that what you mean, Sophie? Yeah, that would probably be what it is, yeah. 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 Yes, that's what she means. Okay. So the story that goes behind that was uh, like a quick nanobush bush story about him stealing a, a thunderbird feather. And he was making his escape from the Thunderbirds that were chasing were throwing lightning at him. So he was trying to get away for a while. Okay. And he was running and running, getting tired, and they're keeping up with him pretty good. So he comes upon a tree that was all white, and um, he decided to hide in it. So he could still hear all this thunder and lightning and stuff crashing and him getting closer and closer. So anyway, they find him. He knows that he's hiding in that tree. So him, he's just trying to stay safe. So. And so he stays in there and they're still hitting the tree and making noise outside the tree and he's all scared. So it comes morning time and you can hear the to hear them leaving. So he decides to look around and find that they're not there, but he noticed that tree was different than the night before. So notice that those like them eyes. So these are the eyes. Yeah. So these were like from the wing tips you know the thunderbird clawing and pecking at the tree so that's how they got all these eyes and stuff and that's how these thunderbirds can be into that tree so that's how 
you know, on some trees, they, they really look like a cross section of a thunderbird flying. So you can really see that in some bark pieces. Does that work okay? It was a, a shortened up story, but yeah. I mean, there was other stories that I heard that go along with it. It just yeah. takes a long time. Yeah, you said chimigwitch. Okay. And we have some other questions about like uh, measurements of uh, things that you've already covered. So maybe at the end, we can just go over measurements of. Okay. Yeah, again. When do you start and stop picking and peeling your bark when you are gathering in the bush? You don't go too early. That's what you mean, like in the daytime? Yeah. You don't go too late. I guess it's like when I say for rice, you know, you go out there when there's no dew out there. So, you know. Basically, midday. Is it best to go in the um, spring or the summer or? That there, like if you go in a certain time of the summer, like say when um, the lady slippers are turning purple and you cut the tree, it'll come right off all by itself. You don't have to peel it, it'll just peel off. Mm. That's mid, you know, mid July sometime or the end of it. Okay. Um, but other than that, you, you have to work at it because you're dealing with winter bark. So you're dealing with just sticking to the tree. And once you peel it in the early spring or late fall, you'll notice that with all your bark, sometimes this will peel off and you'll have it all speckled. And that's why that's like that because of letting go or keeping that skin from the winter or growing it on for winter growing a new layer. Okay. So I kind of got a, a hole there, but that means now I gotta thin this down to go through that. Someone also, um, Lisa, Oh no, Maggie also said, also remember to bring your SAMA before per picking the birch bark and spruce root. Oh yeah. yeah. Very good reminder. Yeah. But like I said, that's why trying to recycle some of the stuff into little things like this. And I just want to just speaking about Asema, I did um, mail um, Laban some oh, yeah. uh, Asema that I grew in my garden last, in my Gitagon last uh, summer, fall. And so uh, just to thank him for um, agreeing to do this session. And then I also put some out today for all of us in the session, but also for uh, protection for uh, Laban during the session. what I did right now was I put some pencil marks to where I know the distance of this is going to be. So where I have to trim this down to fit into the holes. So Dana says, I've been in ceremony where some folks had uh, she should go on, she should go on, yeah, she should go on yeah. made just like these, but out of tin soup cans, LOL. Yeah. Guess, they, <laughs> yeah. guess they use what they had. Laban, have you ever seen or made those? I have not. 
but I made, you know, using bullhorn before too, which are really nice. And I'm sure they have a really nice sound when being in a, a can. Yeah. And Juanicia says, makes my heart sing, like the rattle. <laughs> and then somebody else said, um, small co copper cups. Mm, is that, yeah. Is that what's been used before? Yeah. Yeah, so all I'm doing right now is trying to whittle this down so I can fit it through here, okay? Okay. I just want to do a quick shout out to the ACO Gina Weaned, uh Youth Program that's uh, doing this from the American Indian Community Housing Organization uh, with Katie Schmitz, the Children's uh, Program Coordinator. So we have um, some youth that are Doing, doing this in the children's room, as well as a couple elders. And so I just wanna say, miigwech for joining us. And miigwech to Laban for uh, sending us uh, some kits for that. Oh, and Soundy says, miigwech from the eight of us from the Native Women's Care Circle in Osage Territory, known yeah. as St. Louis. Um, Dene says, my fave shishiguan is a baking powder tin. <laughs> Camelite they, ones? <laughs> yeah, that's what that would be, a Camelite, right? With that one. Later with the headdress on it. And then Maggie says, I have a very thin, oh, Danae says, a hey, yeah. <laughs> um, Maggie says, I have a very thin copper sheeting and want to attach to the inside of the rattle. How could I do that? A thin copper sheet sheeting. Double it up and then sew it together. Just like two layers. Just like how you're doing it right now, but you just have that extra copper layer, which is an, actually a pretty good idea. Okay, that, that's very innovative. I like that. Lots more to go. That's a really good idea. I like that idea. This might yeah. be a good time too to just let folks know that if you're interested in having hiring Laban to do a session like this for your organization or for your women's group or for any group um he is um available to do that and um uh becky's gonna put his email in the in the chat if you wanted to reach out to him to arrange for that and there it is thanks becky Yeah, so if you get red willow too, you don't have to do as much carving as I'm doing. So I have to go down quite a bit. <clears throat> as long as this is, this end is pretty sturdy, then you don't have to worry about it breaking. But if you use a drill, you can actually kind of get a bigger hole than what I've got. But don't be afraid to use a drill. I'm just throwing on just like anything without power tools. Lorraine Fox says that her 
first one that she made was with elk leather and sinew. Mm. The natural, the real stuff though, huh? And Katiri says, thank you so much. I have to leave, but I'm looking forward to the recording so I can make my own. You are so welcome. Thanks for joining mm. us. Yeah, thanks. Exactly. And Laban, if they're like, we're, we're at eight o'clock and then I'm, I'm not trying to do the Western colonial colonizer thing on you. Um, mm -hmm. But I just wanted to, cause you were gonna, if we had time, you were gonna show how to etch the, do a little etching on the, on the rattle too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah okay. I could still do that. Like so, I'm almost done getting this. Okay, together. cool. Like I will finish this, I'll, I will finish this whole process here. I'll pin it real quick and yeah, etching, and etching is really easy. Okay. Let me switch to the Nokomis Cultural Heritage Center. They have to leave, but mm. they're looking forward to the recording. Gitchi, Miigwech, Laban, and Ivy. Yeah, I wish I could have got through the process just a little bit quicker so they could have seen Come around to see the etching. Wayne Doopy says, Miigwech Laban, Ivy, and Becky. Miigwech, Wayne. Hoping that a lot of you can stay on with us. Uh, we want to open it up and have people share their progress too. So stick with us. Oh, for the wood, for the wood, for the handle, should it be dried or can you put it together if it's fresh? Oh yeah, I've done it fresh. Yep. Okay, they were thinking that it would be loose if, if you put it in when it's, when it's wet. because oh, they're thinking about the dry. Oh. Yeah. My husband's making tea, so if you hear water boiling, that's what that is. Okay. Anna says, I can stay all night. <laughs> Uh, Elaine says, thanks so much. Can't wait to see the video. Love you, cuz. Love you too, Elaine. Carla says she can stay all night too. Well, all right, Laban. There's no pressure now. Okay. <laughs> Someone's still whittling and carving their their handle. It's so, okay. Oh, where do you buy your all? They're um, custom made. Make them. That's a stock steel. You can see I just glued it in there and sharpen that up. You see, that's just a non-fancy handle. I I made birch bark handles with these. I don't have them to show you, but this is a nice maple, tiger maple one. I just had it was an old decoy for ice fishing I was making, but I made it too short, so it came in handy to make it all. So, yeah, these are made these. What other classes do you teach um, while you're working on that? Can you talk about that? Oh, yeah, we could do birch bark. Yeah. 
decoys. I've done decoy ice fishing decoys like this one, you know. But yeah, for ice fishing where you go spearing them, I love that. Actually, I learned that from my dad. That's his ice fishing decoys and carving and done carving like actual bass and he does a lot of, a lot of carving so he's a good carver showed me how to do some carving as well have you made a birch bark canoe yes several elm bark canoes as well eric says you should do one on all making oh like tool class yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're not that difficult, but I mean, it's just as fancy as you want to get, like, you know, come up with some ideas for handles and stuff. Usually you make them um, different, just like crooked knives. Sorry. Do you do any other types of uh, traditional art, like beadwork and things like that? I don't do bee work now. I, yeah, I, mean, I, I do a lot of other things. Um, like, yeah. Okay. We have an all question. What kind of glue do you use with your all? Uh, epoxy. Epoxy. Yeah. Yeah, that's why there's that little sheen on there. This is the rough one. Okay. But yeah, I use these on birch bark baskets, canoes. I want to make somebody mentioned, somebody saw on the internet that you do tattoo designs. <laughs> yeah, I do tattoos, yes. <laughs> I do airbrushing too and all that kind of stuff. So. You say that anything that I do is basically um, native artist work, you know, it's, you know, just it's native art. Have you taught classes on airbrushing? One on one. Yes, I have. Okay. Not like a huge class, no. Okay. I've done mirror etching workshops before too. And people like that. But it's a technique I came up with for drawing on mirrors and you know, like how do you draw on a mirror without it? Um you're losing detail, right? The same thing will go for a window too. So. But I use a Dremel and um, and it's a diamond head. So here here it is. That's not complete or pinned or anything because I got to pin this up here with a toothpick so it sticks and it's solid. And I might do that down here. But there's that. Well, I whittled down my handle. You can see how much I have to whittle that down. Okay. So I got that in there. Now I can show you how to etch, unless you want me to um, pin this together. Because I use toothpicks for that. If I pin it together, let me know what you want me to do. So I can do either or. Um, it, it's up to you. Okay. Um, let me, I think there's questions here. Um, what are some other materials you can use inside your shaker? You, you all, you already mentioned bear, dried bear scat. Um, is yeah, there anything else? Yeah, like anything you want to put in there. You can go to the beach and find some stones that you find meaningful for yourself or, you know, whatever you find that you feel like you want to put in there. You can even probably put in like bones and stuff. Okay. 
Like and it's then, just like it's really open for your take on it. You know, I'm showing you the the I showed you the process of this. Yeah. And as much meaning as you want to put into it now, or you know, like anything that you feel that relates to you and your story and what you want, or if you're giving it to somebody, or you know, all those things, you know, all that stuff comes into play in that time. Like I said, I'm just showing you a good catalyst, right, mm -hmm. to start from. So now you can like beat it and I can show you how to etch it. Okay. Um, so um, I'll, I'll really quickly pin these down real yes. quick. Yes, that's what everybody so, wants. Everybody's, everybody's been putting that. Okay, so I'm using a tack. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around this. Do BBs come in one size, um, Laban, or does it matter the size of the pellets? Mm, no, like I said, it's whatever you feel like you want to experiment with. And here, maybe some, some sounds different or a little better to the way you want it to sound. Then, yeah, oh, I got stuck in there. Okay, Lisa was saying that maybe we could use dried beans or seeds. Oh yeah, anything like. Anything that'll work it into making that sound. Okay. Right. My tack metal got stuck in there. I gotta pull it out. <laughs> Yeah, choke cherry seeds, somebody said. Those would totally work. And Katie from ACO just sent me a couple of the pictures of the of the youth working on their rattles. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we can um, bring you to ACO when it's safe to do so and you can do an in-person with us. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. So I got the bottom one pinned to the... So I pinned like three in there. So this is stuck to the part. Now I gotta do this top one. Yeah, also, as far as etching goes, like you have some designs that you come up with, or like florals or anything, whatever you want to put on here. A couple ways of doing it too, so that you can etch away all the stuff and leave the design as the winter bark, or you can do the opposite, the negative and positive kind of 
But you can actually, it's a little different with summer bark. You can make a design and it's a little bit harder than it is to etch, but you can sand wash that white, uh, make it even lighter. So, but you have to have a stencil and put it on there. Make sure that stencil doesn't come off when you're sand washing it in the water. So you'd be washing it and you'd still have your design on her, but if it comes off, then it kind of messes with your image. Do you ever etch it before you sew it up? Mm, no. And can people paint on it? Oh yeah, you're more than welcome to paint on it, yeah. I mean, if you're using any other bark, yeah. But I would just say, just going with winter bark, yeah, it's best for etching. It's, um, it's a rarity. You don't always get winter bark. But I'll have my caps pinned. What I'm gonna do now so it stays to the stick is just pin this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make my mark so I can see where it is. Okay, we have a pin pinning question. A penny? A pin? Like a pin. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. I, I don't understand the pins he's putting in. Are they only through the bark? No, I'm going deep enough that it penetrates the bark and into the wood. So let's see. So I pin it. That whole tip it goes through the bark and into the so it holds it steady. Oh. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do now is put this through there, and it's going to hold this solid to the handle. But I got to pull this out to make my. Okay. Would the wooden pins break off? Break it off? No. Mm -hmm. Cause they're pretty sturdy. They're toothpicks, that's what I'm using. Okay. Yeah, so sometimes when you're working with trying to get this through. Sometimes this wood will split on you. But then you can always tie, tie it too, but I'm just pinning it right now. Trying not to get that to split. I know what I should do is probably get some tape that'll do that. I told him you were making tea. So just taping that tip when you're trying to put a hole for your pin to go through, it just kind of helps the wood stay together from splitting. Once the pins are in, can you cut the excess so that the they are, the pins are flesh with the bark? Yeah, that's what I did as I went through the steps. I had them sticking out and then I had just cut them off while I was working. So they were sticking out kind of like, like that and then I just cut them off. So that's why they're flush now. So you can see the, uh, the dot there. Mm -hmm. yeah.
You're so cool, Laban. All right, got that cool. Let's see if it works. Laban is split. Gail, Gail says, Laban, you are so patient with us, Chimigwich. You are a born teacher. Oh, thanks. So now that I have my pin full, now I can push it through there. Maggie said hominy would sound great in that. Oh yeah, that. never tried that. Arnie said, uh, how many sounds good anyway? anyway. <laughs> uh, put this back on just in case it wants to split. Yeah, it's not too hard to etch on these. Sometimes you can have already pre-made designs, like on like a stencil or something, if you have a bunch of stencils. Yeah, so it's pin did split, but yeah, that happens when you use a small spot. I can tie that. But it's locked into place pretty good. Now I can show you etching. Great. I have a spray bottle here with me. I'm just gonna spray this. Well, I'll draw my design real quick. Just a design.
While you're doing that, I just thought of um, something because Arnie put um, some maple syrup that Jim Northrup Abun made years ago. We still had a big, huge um, glass container of it and we use it for special things. And um, he's the one that taught me how to peel birch bark off of trees uh, for his birch bark baskets. And he taught me how to make my first birch bark basket. And um, he told me after I, it took me two and a half days to make my first birch bark basket. And when I put that final stitch on the rim and I was done with it and I was so proud of myself, he looked at me and he said, you know what you got to do now? And I said, what? And he said, you have to gift it to someone. Mm, since it's your first one. Yes. So you've heard that too? Oh yeah. So is that something that you would um, encourage people to do? Oh yeah, for sure. Everybody likes getting, receiving a gift. Yes. It feels good to give and it feels good to receive. So there's a quick design I have on here. Okay. Oh, nice. <clears throat> I'm just spraying this down. <clears throat> so I have a exacto knife now. And they work really good with the rounded ones, but I'm going to use a, a flat straight one. See how that line is in there? Yeah, that's cool. I love that. So there, you can do it the other way too. You can go around this and have more of the birch bark layer as the design. I'm just erasing it. So just for quick teaching purposes, Hannah. Yeah. Yeah, that's And you can get really elaborate and take hours to etch, take hours. But it's like how fancy you want to go with it, and whatever you want to do. So Maggie is asking if we can get another look at what people have created. So yeah, we are gonna we're gonna do that. Um, Oh, so, and somebody's got to go. Um, they have an early rise, so they got to go. Okay. Um, should we have people start sharing? Yeah, that's fine because I can finish this etching and we can basically call it. Yeah, okay. This is, you know. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful so far. So, um, Becky, how do, you, how do we want to do this? I have removed the spotlight from Laban's um, videos. And so as folks unmute, their video should pop up for everyone. Okay, so anybody brave to be the first one to show? 
their progress. Nobody's brave. How about does somebody have a question? I have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so I can, let me check. I've got a background on here that makes it hard to see. Yeah, oh, it keeps coming in and out. Let me, let me see if I can change my background if yeah. somebody else wants to go. Buju, Teresa. <laughs> Thank you. Buju. Miigwech, Sharon. Miigwech, Tim and Marky. Okay. All right, there we go. Yeah, so. Oh, oh nice. Oh. Just in front of here. So I got the little pin at the top. Mm -hmm. And then I just used a dowel that I got from um, Walmart. Perfect. And then I, I ended up, I ended up having to use a sinew because that's all I had. Mm. So, okay. miigwech for your teachings. Mm. Where are you from? Thanks for Korea. showing up. Um, uh, boys, boys fort. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Miigwech. Send me a Miigwech. picture, Teresa. Yeah, I will. Um, I'm going to try etching and see if etching works on this. Oh, okay. Um, you know, so when I'm all done with that, then um, I'll send you a picture. But miigwech. Miigwech. Anybody else? Anybody else that's brave? Me, me, I'm just a show off. <laughs> You're brave. Got done, that's good. I like it. I saw somebody on here working along, but I don't see them anymore. Does anybody have a question for Laban? You can unmute and ask. Oh, people are being shy. That's OK. Yeah. I'm glad everybody took time out of their, their day to join. Yes. Oh, is it? Hello? Oh, hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, are you able to use Weegoob to sew them together? Yeah, that's what I used. Weegoob? Isn't Weegoob, um... Basswood? Yeah, basswood. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, you can. Okay, I was just wondering if... It was strong enough, but yeah, I suppose okay. Thank you, Miigwech. Yeah. You can make rope out of that stuff. We will, we will try to have more sessions too, like cultural art sessions and um, the, the grant that we got from uh, Minnesota Department of Human Services, it, it's called a traditional healing grant and um, it's for, uh, we're in the second year of that and uh, I've been doing about once a month uh, workshops like this um, via Zoom because of the pandemic and um, so keep your eye out. I think our next one hopefully will be a storytelling session with Dr. Mike Sullivan and his son Preston. 
Uh, we had them last year and it was a uh, so beautiful. So uh, just kind of keep watch on the uh, um, American Indian Community Housing Organization Facebook page. Um, and now you all have my email so you can keep in contact with me for that. Okay. So I have, uh, you know, so I have your paper. Just basic design. That's beautiful. So there you go, you can embellish it more all you want, beat it, leather it. So there you go. Oh, everybody's saying it's uh, so nice, miigwech. Um, let's see, chi miigwech for the teaching, can't wait to teach my grandson. Mm, nice. Um, if you use old birch bark, you have to wet it first and then use the heat gun. Yep. Unless it's fairly thick and it doesn't want to round properly, then yes, then you could heat it up. Heating it just makes it more pliable. Okay. Laban, you are such a good teacher. I'm far from home and so really appreciating all the teachings that have been available. Awesome. Oh, and do you spray the rattle before you started etching it or after, I guess? Before no, that's, that's the whole secret. Yeah, yeah. Get that layer damp. So it's pretty dry now, but you could probably still etch on it. But no, I, I dampened it so I can etch on it. Yeah, and then you always just try and wipe off the excess because it might tear. There's a certain balance between too wet because you don't want to carry your design. I can clean this up a little bit more and make it a little bit more sharp, but for this teaching, I'll show you real quick. Right now you have a shaker now. Oh, me glitch so much. Everybody's just so happy and um, yeah, so Thank you for bringing this, this teaching to us, Laban, and this healing. Uh, it was very healing for me. I had a very stressful day today. And right. so um, to be able to, to learn from you has just been like the stress just flew right off of me. And um, just your, your teachings um, really help. And I'm sure they helped a lot of people here. And uh, looking forward to, to doing something in person with you. and. Um, and our ACO families, and mm -hmm. I will, I will uh, again email everybody uh, the the survey link, um, and also um, the recording to this. So if you want to 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 use it as a reference while you're finishing your rattle or starting your rattle, because some of you just watched tonight, I'm going to use it as a reference when I make mine, um, and. Uh, yeah, so I will email you all that. And then if you have any questions, you can you can let me know. I will also, if it's okay with Laban to put your email in the the in the, the in the email that I send out. So if people wanted to um, inquire about a workshop with you for their organization or and such, they can make that connection. Is that okay? Oh yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay, great. So I will do that as well. I'll put that in the email that I send out and I will try to do that um, tonight still. It's been a long day. Um, so I might do it early in the morning because mm -hmm. I haven't even eaten yet. Um, oh, no. Yeah, so I will um, do that. And I just, any last words that you want to share with us, Laban, before we, we, we leave? I just want to thank everybody that showed up and who had interest in this and we appreciate it. Okay. Great. Thanks for having Maybe. me. Yeah, miigwech. Yes? We did have a question on um, the survey. It says it's for a painting class. Yeah, I think um, I, I think I might have uh, accidentally, I, I will send out the right one. Okay, the and email. then there were some folks asking what kind of spray you were oh, using. Oh, it's just water. Just water. Mm -hmm. it's, you can even use a damp cloth, just enough to make the shaker 
just for your bark to be just damp enough to um, actually. Okay. I gotta get a picture of you leaving. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, like, I gotta show you one of the pictures of the, um, Katie sent me of the, of the kids at ACO. I'm gonna try okay. to show it to you. Um, so those are all the kids working on, on their rattles. Oh, nice. Yeah. So wearing their masks and being safe. <laughs> so um, miigwech again, and I'm going to, I'm going to sign off here. Um, and uh, a heat. Oh, wait, no, sorry. There was one last question. Did I see Laban use a spray can? No, it was just a, um, just a water bottle. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's the last question. All right. Miigwech, everybody. Um, stay well. Um, be careful. This Omicron is being very, very catchy and, and it's everywhere right now. So um, be careful and wear your mask, face masks and all that good stuff. So we got to keep all, all our knowledge holders and elders and families safe from this, this pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, all right. I'm going to let you all go. Thanks for. Giggle up. Giggle up, man.